When you begin to play with real flow graphs, you soon realize that they can become as big and complex as you want. Let me open, for example, one of the distributed demo scenes. This graph is quite simple. It contains barely four nodes. But now, if we take a look at the frames post stage, the graph that we find is much bigger. Fortunately, the different sections of this graph are properly separated and documented. Keeping this in mind, there are several ways to keep your graphs powerful but still readable. My first advice is quite generic and obvious. You should rename your nodes according to what they represent. Having 100 nodes called Real01, Real02, Real03 does not help at all. But this is something that can be applied to any other situations, like real flow object names or your Python script variable names. In order to rename a node, you can right click on it and select Rename Node. Sometimes you don't really need to see anymore the whole list of pins of a node. Just double click on a node to collapse and expand it, or click on the related toolbar buttons. You can create nodes to write additional information embedded in your graph. To create a node, simply right click in the background of the graph. The same action is possible from the tab menu or from the top toolbar. Once you have created your node, you can move it dragging it from its top region. To resize the node, you can pull its bottom right corner. Double click in the top, you will be able to edit the content. And in the context menu, you can change the font and background colors. You can also use the pass through node to control the layout of the connections in your graph. The pass through node does not have any effect on the graph execution results. However, they can be really useful in a variety of situations. You can create a pass through like the rest of the nodes using the tab menu or the add new node button. A pass node has the same number of outputs as inputs, and you can create Rename or remove them at will. It is also possible to create pass nodes right where they are actually needed. For example, if a connection crosses a significant region of the graph, you can split this connection with a pass node and relocate it. If one output is connected to several inputs and you want to change the origin of those connections, you don't have to remove all the connections to recreate them. A better way to do this is adding a pass through right after the output pin. Then, simply change the input connection of the pass-through Finally, if you don't need it anymore, you can remove this auxiliary pass node If you create a pass-through before or after a node, a single pass node will contain as many pins as the amount of pins of the node Later, if you collapse this node, all its incoming connections take much less space. In summary, pass through nodes let you reorganize the connection layout of your graph, but the amount of nodes when you use them is not decreased. In fact, it's increased. That's why we added the compounds feature. Compounds are special graph nodes that can contain other nodes inside, allowing the user to have several levels inside the same graph. Compounds can also be created from the tab menu or clicking the Add New Node button. This will create an empty compound. Actually, when a compound has no inputs or outputs, it is displayed with a certain level of transparency, like if it were disabled. The double-click action over a node usually collapses or expands it. However, with compounds, 
A double click action shows the content of the compound. At any moment you can see the name of the level you are currently at. The topmost level is called root and it does not display any arrow on its left side. When you are browsing a compound, you can click on the up arrow to go back to its parent level. Right click in the background also lets you go back to the parent view. In order to allow some interaction between what's inside the compound and what is outside, it is necessary to create what we call compound interfaces. Compound interfaces are graph nodes that can exist only inside compounds. Depending on its functionality, they can be output or input interfaces. The most important thing is that compound interface pins are displayed by its parent compound as pins from itself. Therefore, creating a compound interface pin will lead to a new pin for the compound. And creating a pin for the compound will automatically create a new compound interface node. Connecting something to a compound pin is equivalent to connecting it to what its interface pin is connected to. You can see the compound interface as a pass-through node. Evaluator nodes can only exist at root level. If something inside the compound needs to be evaluated, then it has to be connected to an output interface, and then that compound pin has to be finally connected to the evaluator. On the other hand, iterator nodes can be created only inside compounds. This is so because the iterator nodes need a scope for their iterations. The iterator nodes are the for and the kernel node. Now let me prepare a simple graph. The most useful way to create a compound is selecting a bunch of nodes and clicking on Compound Selected Nodes. Realflow will automatically create a compound, move the selected nodes inside it, and check the connections of these nodes that are related to the nodes that remain outside the compound. A new pin is created on the compound for every one of these connections. This means that several connections coming from a very same pin can lead to many nodes inside the compound. In that case, several compound pins will be created, and the outside pin will be connected to all of these new compound pins. Sometimes you probably want to avoid this behavior. The best way to do it is by adding a pass-through node after the common pin. Then. Make sure that this pass-through node is also selected when the compound is being created. As expected, only one compound pin is created. At any moment, it is possible to add more nodes to an already existing compound. Just select the desired nodes and click on Move to. You can also select nodes from inside the compound and move them back to the parallel level. Finally, you can remove a compound without altering the graph behavior by clicking on Explode Compound. After compounds have been created and tweaked, you can think of them as black boxes. You can just forget about what happens inside. If you are happy enough with your compound or your whole graph, you can save it.
There are several saving options. The File Save and Save As option let you save the whole graph to an XML file. The Export Selected option will save only the portion of the current level that is selected at the moment. The Export Current Level to Library option is pretty interesting. Selecting that option, the whole current level of the graph view can be saved in your graph library. The location of the graph library can be changed from real through preferences. When you decide to export something to the library, Realflow prompts for the category and the name of the new node. After exporting it, it will be immediately available in the tab menu, right at the category you have specified. Furthermore, any changes on the graph library folder are reflected in Realflow in real time. It is important to keep in mind that when you create a new node based on these XML files, it is like if you were copying and testing that compound inside the graph. Once the compound has been created, there is no link between the original compound and the newly created one. Every graph in Realflow is self-contained. There are no references to other graphs or files. Copying and pasting in graphs works as expected too. Graphs in Realflow use a plain text XML representation, so it's possible to simply open a graph file in a text editor, copy its content, and then paste it in Realflow. You can either paste it as is, or paste it as a new compound. Drag and drop works in a similar way. If you drop a file inside the graph canvas, a compound is created. Don't forget to visit Realflow Resources website to search your graphs and download those available online.